I hope you're well. So uh, what is the point of a joint? Well, I mentioned in a previous video that I'm going to be drifting into doing a little bit of very basic joinery for a couple of projects that I've got coming up. And I thought before we got to those projects, it would be worth doing a which joint when kind of video where we take five or six basic kind of joints that you can make with just a track saw pencil and maybe a chisel just to clean up some inside edges. Uh, and then there's probably a video where we take those same five or six joints and, and show you how to fake those using sheet goods as well, because not everybody uses uh, natural timbers. And then I realized before we get to that even, there's probably a video, this video, where we try and explain why we're doing this, why we're cutting all those funny shapes to make a joint, to join two pieces of wood together. And the answer to that, what's the point of a joint, is probably going to depend on you and the type of woodworking that you do. For example, if you're a fine woodworking hobbyist, then in a way the joint is the point, the thing you happen to be making is just a vehicle for you to practice your joinery on, maybe to showcase it, to show other people how good you are at it. On the other hand, if like me, you're a jobbing fitted furniture guy doing built-ins, then your joinery is very simple, sort of T connectors or L connectors to join sheet goods together so that you can assemble a cabinet or a piece of fitted furniture or wardrobe here, take it apart, flat pack it, take it on site and then reassemble it ready for fitting. So that kind of joinery is all about dominoes and lamello clamex joints and peanut joints, quick production methods, the polar opposites of the fine woodworking. But between those two kind of extremes, there's a whole range of applications where the point of a joint, the point of all those funny shapes that you cut into a piece of wood, well, the point of that is actually just to get more glue in there. Let me show you what I mean. So you want to join two pieces of wood together into an L shape. You want to make a frame, you want to put a leg on a table or something like that. Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? You get a piece of wood and you get glue on one end press them together, you put a clamp on it and before you know it, once the glue's cured, get the clamp off and there it is, strong as anything. Well, it's not actually that strong because you've got end grain glued onto long grain. In fact, the only weaker joint is end grain to end grain, which is why you don't see that very often. This is actually surprisingly strong. Um, you could probably, I can't actually, break that apart with my bare hands. Uh, this was glued yesterday and has had a, more than overnight for the glue to fully cure. I actually did a video where I made a little side table that was just glued together in, in this way and I, had, I could stand on it very comfortably and I had to jump up and down on it to get it to actually break. So it's stronger than you think, but nobody would really call that joinery exactly, would they? Um, because what's happening there is you've only got glue on one small face. That's where something like a loose tenon comes into its own, of course, or dowels or biscuits. They just allow that much more glue to be inserted within the joint. Another way to do it, of course, is even this, a simple half lap joint, gives you three times as much gluing area as that simple butt joint because you're removing so much of the material and it all joins together really well. Three times as much glue doesn't necessarily mean it's three times as strong, but it means that it's going to be much better than a simple butt joint. And the fact that the half lap has these little rebates in it that locate themselves against the edge of the other workpiece means it's a much stronger bond all around. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, you said end grain to end grain is one of the weakest joints you're going to get. Well, what about mitres? You, you, you made a picture frame not so long back with just mitered corners that were glued together. And you're absolutely right, I did. And firstly, when you get a mitre, because of the shape of it, obviously, it has about a third as much gluing area as a straightforward butt joint on the same section material. So you're already a step up. I did say in that video that that was just for me and it was just for a very lightweight picture, lightweight print that's going in it. 
It's not going to be transported anywhere. It's not going to be treated roughly. So there's no particular need. And I think I've demonstrated already just how strong potentially a simple glued butt joint can be if you're doing it for yourself. But it's also the reason why most mitres have some other way to join them together. You might get a spline running in across the corner or you'd put dowels or a biscuit or a loose tenon, a domino inside there. Again, just like the straight joint, because that just gives you that much more gluing area to keep it all connected together. And it also references uh, the joint so that both faces all meet up nice and tidily. Um, not all joins are about getting more gluing area in there, although that is a consequence of them. Uh, something like a rebate or a rabbit has physical properties too. So it has a little lip where if you're making an L type joint like this, it actually supports the material and things at the other end of the scale, like dovetails, where the shape of the tails are actually extremely strong because it won't pull out in that direction. There's only one direction that that will actually come out in. It's also a huge amount of gluing area inside these tails and inside the pins when those two mate together. Same goes for box joints as well, Whoops. which is basically like a dovetail, but with the pins straightened out. Box joints are popular because they have a lot of gluing area, so it makes for a very strong joint. That and many other things are things that we'll be talking about in the subsequent videos. We'll be looking particularly at uh, rebates or rabbit joints. We'll be looking at housings or dados. We'll be looking at half laps and cross lap joints as well. We'll be looking at bridle joints, both in a T formation and an L formation. And we'll also be looking at mortise and tenons, and perhaps loose tenons too. Those and many more are all coming up in future videos. We'd love to have you along if you can spare the time, but I'm going to call this one done for now. Thanks so much for taking a look, and I'll see you again in the next one very soon. All right, take care.